I'm just doing like a mini Sunday reading vlog. I was going to start one yesterday, but we ended up spending the whole day at my sister's apartment. Um, it was awesome. My parents came in, they brought my dog, my brother took the train from school, and we had like a ham fam day. We are trying to plan a big trip for the summer, and there's a lot of moving pieces, and we just thought we would get together and do like a little huddle and plan some things. And my dog had a grand old time. He was doomies, doing his zoomies up and down my sister's hallway for hours. <laughs> and then I actually did finish a book this morning. I finished The Manning Tree Witches by A.K. Blakemore. I really, really liked it. It's set during the English Civil War um, in like the witch hysteria, the witch hunt hysteria and it's based on a few real people, and I really, really enjoyed it. It had all the pieces that I felt like I wanted from Rib Ribka Galkin's Everyone Knows Your Mother is a Witch, which has like this really sassy, satirical tone to it. It had all that, but with the historical context as well. I really liked it, but I have acquired a few new books. Um, well, new to me, they're, they're used books. I ordered them and they finally got here, so this, First one I have is The Beach by Eric Garland. I heard about this one from Grace. She raved about it. It's supposed to be like a creeping dystopian novel of um, set in like a tropical landscape and things very quickly go south. It's compared to Lord of the Flies quite often. So I'm super excited about this one. It actually was gifted to somebody for Christmas in 1999, which is so cute. I love when there's little notes in my books that I buy used. Um, so super excited about this one. And then I also got, which is a hardback, which I didn't know, and it's in great condition, is um, Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James. It's the first of a series, and I think the second one is coming out sometime in 2022, but this is supposed to be a really great fantasy book. So this is, I'll just read you the blurb. It says, Tracker is known far and wide for his skills as a hunter. He has a nose, people say. Hired to find a mysterious boy who has disappeared, Tracker breaks his own rule of always working alone when he finds himself part of a group assembled to search for the boy. The band is a hodgepodge, full of unusual characters with secrets of their own, including a shape-shifting man, man-animal known as the Leopard. As Tracker follows the boy's scent, he and the band are set upon by creatures intent on destroying them. As he fights for survival, Tracker starts to wonder, who really is this boy? Why has he been missing for so long? And why do so many people want to keep the boy from being found? And perhaps the most important of all, who is telling the truth and who is lying? So I'm super excited about this one. It sounds fantastic. And then the last book I wanted to mention is Proof of Me and Other Stories by Erica Paluk Lazor. So this was sent to me by K Publicity. So thank you so much. This is obviously a collection of short stories set in a small town in Eastern North Carolina with a few memorable characters. So I might dip in and out of this one. So yeah, like I said, I finished The Manning Tree Witches this morning. I started the audiobook for The Name of the Wind yesterday. I'm only like 20 minutes in and I think it's like a 30 hour audiobook. So I'm not too sure how I feel about it yet. It seems like it's going to be a fun fantasy, easy listen. Um, but other than that, we have no plans today. We have dinner plans at night, but you know, I think we're just going to walk around. We have some grocery shopping to do, which I feel like we do a lot, but I think we're going to do that. And then we're going to try to go to this print shop. We're looking for artwork. As you may know, it's taken a lot longer than we both anticipated. Marco's over it, but I still want to make it, make the apartment like a really cozy place. I want to get some artwork and we do have some new furniture, decorative things that are Hopefully we're going to be making some progress on next weekend, but for today, you know, nothing crazy, um, but nothing else to report. That's all I have for you right now, and I will check in with you later.
going to go to that place book club that I mentioned before. It's so close to our apartment and we're going to go and read there for a few hours before our dinner reservation. I gave Marco, he's not a huge reader guys, he doesn't love to read, but I recommended him The Lost Man by Jane Harper. I think he would like it. It's um, a story about three brothers. One turns up dead in the desert, the Australian outback, and it's very clear that it was foul play and they're trying to decide who in the family might have had it in for the brother Cam. It's really fun. And I am reading The, Law, the Strange Bird by Jeff Vandermeer. It's a super slim novella. I'm 25 pages in and I'm loving every second of it. I'm back in the Bourne universe, which I just love everything about it. Vandermeer is so good at creating these characters that are so lovable, yet alien to us, yet really familiar. The writing is really beautiful. I've already like completely fallen in love with this strange bird, and I just am so glad to be back in this Bourne universe. So that's what we're doing right now, and then we do have a dinner reservation in like a few hours. It's restaurant week, so that means that you can go to like these really fancy restaurants and they set a fixed menu and things and like a fixed price so you can go to restaurants that you normally wouldn't go to because they're way too expensive. So that is what we're doing. Um, and that's all I have to tell you. I'm wearing my, my grandma's gloves. Aren't these cute? Little purple trim. All right, that's all she wrote. Bye guys. <laughs>
um, they're all coming into play here, but it's really about this new voice looking at it in a new lens. And this bird, like I said, she's part many things and we really hear her humanity, the voice coming through her, but also maybe not needing her to be related to humans to have this kind of um, emotional complexity. Uh, it's a lot about the commodification of animal animals or non-human beings. Um, there's this really great line about somebody taking this strange bird for like a collector's item and her being worthy because she's seen as beautiful and why am I good just because I'm beautiful and vice versa. Um, it's fantastic. I'm loving every single second of it like I said and I can't wait to finish it but I'm almost like because I'm loving it so much I don't want to finish it but it's so short that I know I will soon enough and I can't I can't help it. Um, but it's making me want to return to his other books. It's a strange thing, and I think it's quite wonderful that any, even though I haven't loved all of his books, I know I'm a Jeff Vandermeer stan here, but I liked A Peculiar Peril. I don't really know what happened to me during that read. I didn't love Hummingbird Salamander. I liked it, but I didn't love it. The ending kind of made it stand out for me. Obviously, the Southern Reach trilogy is my one and only everything in this world, and then Born, Dead Astronauts, loved, loves them both. Um, but it's this strange thing that I could, I think I could pick up any book and know if it's Vandermeer, because while he always has like surprises in store, he has a very specific style of writing, and he loves talking about these same things quite often, this bioengineering of animals, this abuse of our fellow um, species on this planet, so I think I could always know a Vandermeer book. He has a really great way of creating um, something that's kind of grotesque and horror-filled and making these creatures come to life. So this is an example of Vandermeer's ability to create the weird and wonderful and kind of horrifying but fantastic. So this is about a man named Charlie X. Um, the moon-faced children, the sad, malnourished children, gasped and chattered in a language the strange bird did not know, or perhaps it was nonsense, gibberish, but they did not draw back or seem overly surprised, and by, the and by this the strange bird knew the magician was often murderous. No blood came from Charlie X's throat, and instead out poured a stream of tiny mice, and she saw that the mice had already begun to stitch up the cut with their teeth from the inside out as the man gurgled and struggled to right himself stumbled against the side of the stone table hand as it met the stone touching her wing as well so his throat has been slit and instead of blood pouring out of him mice are and they're stitching him together as he's writing himself standing upright so that's just a little taste of what this book holds but it's brilliant in every way and i can't wait to keep reading it but i <laughs> but i have to go now i am meeting marco and a few other people at a place called Vaughn Bar. And then we're from there, we're headed to an Indian restaurant, which I'm not sure the name of, but I'm very excited. And that's all I have for you right now. But like I said before, I am framing this and making this a print in my apartment. Oh my God, I have prints to show you guys. I totally forgot. Marco and I, one of the things we did today was go to this print, print store, which again, I'm not remembering the name. Um, but it had amazing options and we did get a few prints. We obviously have to get them framed still because they're really delicate. But first we have this mushroom print, which is really beautiful. Not sure what we're going to do with it yet. I think we're going to put it in the bathroom above, um, the towel rack. And then Marco's choice <laughs> is a New Yorker print from 1946 which is fish and people looking in. I don't even know if you can properly see it. It's really fun and kind of trippy, really fun colors. So this might go above his little fly tying desk. And then my personal pick was the eggs, <laughs> the egg prints, which I think is super fun and beautiful. A lot of really fun earth tone colors, which is, you know, what we're going for here. And then we still, we've kind of come to a decision for what we're gonna do on the big wall. We have a print. Well, actually, it's a painting, I'm pretty sure. And it comes with, or you can order with it, a custom frame. So I think we're going to have a really big piece of art on this corner wall. But it's all coming together a little bit piecemeal. But, you know, 
we're not professionals here and we're both super lazy in terms of decorating. We have a lot of ideas, but the actual idea of going out, ordering these things, finding these pieces, we're a little bit worn out, but I need to go and get to this bar. But I just wanted to give you that little update and I will check in with you guys later tonight.